Hey everyone, this is Andrew Kisson, Director of Marketing with Zon Dental. We're here with Sam Wainwright, uh, Dental Product Manager with Formlabs. Sam, thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm good, Andrew. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, Sam, recently Formlabs launched the not only the Form 3B printer, but you recently launched the Formlabs Permanent Crown Resin. Can you give us a little bit of an overview on the the printer as well as the resin? Sure. So um, this is really just one more step to having a complete dental portfolio for the Form Labs Form 3B. And this is uh, an industry first permanent crown uh, resin. So for 3D printing permanent long term use crowns. Um, and something to note is it's uh, single units. So inlays, onlays, veneers, full crowns, three quarter crowns. Um, and it's, it's quite revolutionary and it's coming in um, uh, four different shades. And uh, we're very excited about this product and, and it's uh, launched in the United States as well as Europe. The printing and, you know, specifically 3D printing in the dental lab space has been around for um, a few years now, but never mm -hmm. really the permanent restorations. Why do you think, whether it's the materials, why do you think it's been so hard for a uh, a company or technology to really get around to print the permanent restoration? Yeah, I think there's a couple things going on. And, and to your point, 3D printing has been in dental for, for actually a very long time. Um, and, you know, 10 years ago, maybe even not even five years ago, you know, these 3D printers were very expensive. Um, you know, so only the biggest laboratories and milling centers could afford to get them. And, you know, today is much different with the Form 3B being very affordable uh, as a print solution. And I think that sort of accessibility, how sort of it's grown the market and, and how many people are actually doing these, you know, 3D printing in, in lab or in practice or what have you, has really given an opportunity for not just uh, permanent crown resin, but a lot of biocompatible resins to be um, developed and, and the resources put into the developing those products and, and making them uh, to where we are today. Because, you know, especially on the regulatory side, you know, those processes can be very expensive. Um, and there has to be sort of like a, a benefit uh, for these companies to do all that work. And it is clear that we are uh, at sort of like a, a deflection point where it's, it's just gaining momentum and, uh, timing couldn't be better. And, you know, we're seeing this with other biocompatible resins with uh, like our um, dental LT Clear V2, our new splint material and, and, and 3D printed dentures, right? Um, so it's really, it's, it's fascinating to be a part of it and watch this evolve very rapidly. And, you know, for, you're talking about being involved in Form Labs with the Form 2, you know, the maybe one of the first or the first low cost mm -hmm. printer to enter the market has only evolved since then but you know let's talk about workflows uh because now there's a different printer for the permanent restoration so t tell us what a dental laboratory would actually need in their production center or in the laboratory to actually produce or print uh the permanent crown restoration sure um so the really nice thing is you know most labs are designing their crowns and restorations um you know dental cad software right uh, for their milling machines uh, and those inputs are exactly the same. The offsets might be a little bit different. So your um, the, the, the die space or your cement gap and all that. Uh, but all those front end, you know, accepting in cases, either scanning or 3D interval scanning and then designing, those all remain the same, which is really a huge benefit uh, to products like this. And so once you have your case designed, you need the 3D printer, um, the Form 3B, um, the permanent crown resin actually has a unique stainless steel build plate specifically for this material and also our temporary CB uh, material as well. And then uh, once you print it out, they, the parts need to be washed in a solvent uh, or a bath and then UV cured. And the great part about our solution is um, the, the, we have an automated wash uh, and curing system to go with our printer all for a very affordable price. So turnkey, you can get up and running with printing these permanent crown restorations and using the permanent crown resin for around like 6,000 bucks, you know, with support, wash and cure, printer and everything. So it's, it's, it's the entire workflow is uh, fairly turnkey and um, we've done all the validation 
and, and work to make sure it's meeting uh, the materials properties and, and the requirements, um, you know, on the back end. You, you talked about the entire workflow. I mean, form labs between the printer, uh, the washing, the curing, the, the resins, you have your own validated system. What does that really mean uh, to the dental laboratory community as a whole? Like w what should uh, a technician take away from, from knowing that it's all kind of under the form labs umbrella? Yeah, it's a great question, and, and it is in ben, like there's many reasons why we're unique in the space, but this is a big part of it. Is um, you know some um, manufacturers of biocompatible resins and products will either put general use sort of washing and curing information for their validated workflow, right, or 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 recommend or require a very expensive sort of component in the process. But whenever we uh, bring on a third-party resin, and, and this permanent crown resin is a uh, third party from uh, our partner Bago, uh, which is well known in the, in the space. Um, we also validate it for our wash and our cure. So we take that extra step to make sure um, these steps of the process are as easy and affordable as possible, um, and really giving like that, that flexibility um, uh, that a lot of labs will sort of want and demand in the space. Um, because s some other validated um, printers might require a very expensive UV cure, for example, you know, where, where ours is, is our very affordable form cure. It's just one uh, a part of the, the workflow. You, you mentioned early on the indications, but I just want to make sure everyone's yep. clear because, you know, the permanent, a permanent restoration is one of those holy grails in, in the mm -hmm. dental lab space. What exactly is the... Um, the form labs permanent resin indicated for. Yep. So it's uh, for single crowns only. So no, no bridged or splinted um, units uh, uh, at this point. Uh, so it's, you know, full contour crowns, three quarter crowns, inlays, onlays, veneers, um, any single unit pretty much. So mostly full service labs, crown and bridge labs are, are your, are the be the best opportunities for a customer? Yeah, I think so. Um, and it will. It's such a low entry point that I think it'll give full service labs and, and other labs as well the ability to uh, you know add this to their uh, you know their their manufacturing uh, or options for products at a very low uh, cost and also per part cost you know is less than five dollars per unit. Um, so, you know, if a lab is um, sort of getting to that sort of production point a bit more specifically, the laboratory is a couple milling machines and they're full, right? And you want to sort of take some, some load off of those machines or even just have redundancy. Um, you know, as anybody knows, if they have one milling machine or, or, or one scanner or one sintering furnace, it becomes a bit of a worry point, right? Um, because if any of those components go down, your whole workflow is sort of, uh, hinging on it. So I think it, the the versatility that this solution gives, its affordability and ease of sort of process is really very attractive for laboratories, for sure. You've been in the in the industry um, for some exciting times, you know, the, the boom of CAD CAM, uh, mm -hmm. I believe when Zirconia first came to market, what gets you so excited about um, being able to kind of print the permanent restoration using the the form labs resins and what does it really mean in your opinion for dental laboratories in the future yeah uh it's a great question um and i really believe the future of dental is 3d printing or vice versa uh, it's just such a perfect technology for the industry where every part every patient every case is unique and different um, additive 3D printing technology like ours and many others is just such a great fit. And, and you know, looking back when Zirconia was uh, first coming to the market with, you know, Lava and 3M, you know, the it was an, uh, originally came out as just a coping material. So you do buildups on it and alternative to metal. And, and for a laboratory or milling center to get into that system and workflow, uh, you know, it was like a quarter of a million dollars or more. Um, so it, it was a huge investment. Um, some people were very, very successful at it, but many couldn't sort of tag along. And so it took many years after that before, you know, more materials and zirconias came on the market 
and, and these milling machines came down in cost where most laboratories could get into them. And, and so that's like just one of the many reasons why 3D printing in our system, how easy it is to switch materials um, and just do such an assortment of things with, with one printer. It, it's really amazing and fascinating. And, um, you know, I think it's going to change business models because if you sort of think about the, the potential, um, it's almost hard to wrap your head around it, but like there's just going to be more end use appliances uh, being developed or resins to make end use products like splints, just getting better and better permanent crown, like we're talking about temporaries, um, even down the road, maybe flexible partial dentures or, or what have you. It's just really, it's almost like the sky is the limit in many ways. And I, I don't think it's like right around the corner, but I would say in like five or 10 years, the majority of dental um, uh, parts and appliances will be 3D printed. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of the evolution, right? The CAD CAM, the the designing has only gotten better. The technology yeah. in the, the the manufacturing side has only improved. So totally. the name of, the name of the game is versatility, and you know, printing, additive, even subtractive. It's all yep. helping, right? It, that it's is efficiencies, cool. right? Yeah, so, because a lot of labs too, like the with especially baby boomers coming into uh, needing more dental care um, and help. And the amount of dental technicians and laboratories, and you know this very closely, Andrew, there's less and less. So it's a very small and tight labor market. And the only way to meet the demands of the future, and even today, right, um, is with efficiencies and CAD CAM, digital workflows, be it CAD software, um, milling, 3D printing. This is going to help us sort of meet those demands. You know, it, it's the age old saying of the technology is here to assist, right? It's not here yeah. to replace, it's here to help. And especially with kind of the reduction in skilled uh, skilled labor, that mm -hmm. it, it just opens up the opportunity to, to transition or to start, you know, manufacturing or producing restorations a completely different way. So, Absolutely. you know, it's, it's inevitable, right? It, it's, we're not here, nobody's here to say you must invest in this type of equipment, but it sure seems like the entire industry is starting to understand, hey, it's here to aid, you know, it's not here to replace, and then just which system, which workflow, which technology fits into that business's model. Right, I'm totally right. There's just no way with the amount of work that needs to be done, or even like where 3D printing is today, like, um, chair side printing and all these things, it still takes a technician. You know, it takes a lot of time and most dentists don't want to do it, rightfully so. I mean, they'd rather be treating patients. So there's plenty of work, um, there's plenty of upside. Um, and as, you know, as formalized being sort of technical sort of Sherpas and providers, that's really, really exciting to us because we're going to be able to help the industry move forward. And and that, I, I guess the roundabout way to answer your question, that is really very exciting to me. You know, Sam, it, it's always nice to see what uh, companies, technology companies come out with, with you, with Formlabs. It's exciting to see the new resins. I'm sure there's more coming. Um, you know, who knows who will actually be at IDS this year and mm -hmm. uh, when all these shows will be, but it'll, it'll be exciting to see what's next because uh, Forum Labs continues to innovate and bring new products to market. So really appreciate you. your time uh, with me on this week's of Tech Talk and looking forward to uh, seeing what comes next. That's great. Thank you, Andrew, for having me. And I really appreciate it.